Hey there everyone, Dave coming at you from GameVine here and today I'm going to be doing something a bit different. I'm going to be doing my very first preview and this is going to be on the second set of Paco games from Perplex Games. Now this is 9, 10, 11, and 12 and all this I want to remind you because this is a preview is subject to change. They might add more games and the components might change during the process of the Kickstarter which I'm doing the preview for right here. I mentioned this is my first preview because I have been asked by a few people to preview their games for Kickstarters, though I am very picky because in previews when I watch them and I expect to watch a video that's kind of like a commercial. You take out the opinions, you highlight all the things that the um, Kickstarter and or the games have to bring to the table and that's it. And I like the format of a preview but I also like dissecting and reviewing games as well. So. I am very picky on which games and or Kickstarters I want to do a preview for, which is why this is my first one. Now, a caveat, I do previews for games and I want to start doing previews for games that I think will have a great finished product or a good finished product and or I believe in and ultimately I like. So there is a tidbit of my opinion right there. So now let's get to the games. Now if you're familiar with the pack of game system, you know that they try to take these micro games and fit them all in a box that kind of looks like a pack of gum. Now uh, this of course is the second set and uh, the thing I like about the pack of game system, is the charm is that they are portable. Now you can take these to cons or restaurants or just somewhere if you're, you have a little bit of time and a bit of table space you can bust out a filler game. Now I like that because I visit a lot of cons and I want to try to keep what I take uh, game wise to a low amount because you know I'm going to be bringing games back so these fit perfectly now games like Love Letter are even bigger than these games as you can see I can fit these all in my pocket right now and come play them with you so I have four games here for you today the first one I have here is Jim this is where you're going to be picking a team of kids who are good at things or maybe a bully or two that are bad at things and they're going to hinder people and try to compete in different gym activities and the person that does that best will win the game. The second one here is Rum. Now this is kind of a set, uh, a set playing game. You're trying to gain points by playing the largest amount of sets of rum bottles and I'll show you how to play that in a second. The uh, third one that I have here is So. Now this is a kind of distributing and or um, row placement game. You're going to be trying to take these row of cards and distribute them so you can sow the seeds and plant flowers and ultimately gain points off those flowers. So that is so. The last one I have here is Orc. Now Orc is a kind of tug of war battle type game. You're going to, it's a two player game. And this is the only two player game in the set because the other ones play up to four players. Now uh, again this one is just a tug of war battle um, and you are trying to draw cards and you know set off this battle and have the most orcs in said battle to win points. So enough of me trying to explain the games right here. Let me show you how to play and I'll show you what comes in these tiny little pack of game boxes. Let's go. So the four games that I have here, again, it's all subject to change. They might add more in stretch goals or they might just add more if you add a little more to your funding. Uh, they again have the difficulty on the dice on the side of each box. So hooray for continuity there. Again, these are also numbered on the very back here so you can have that kind of collectability aspect. I personally like that. So the four games that we have here are not um, the easiest this is a normal kind of base game and the difficulty goes up here this is the most difficult I have seen it with three pips on the side so I'm gonna go in the order of uh, least difficult to most difficult and I will be starting to show you the games with orc here so let's show you now so this is the game of orc set up you have the box on the very end here now this again is a tug of war type game and if you're familiar with the other uh, pack of games uh, games you're gonna be familiar with the layout and how the cards kind of work so that's a plus if you are a avid pack of game player so in the game of orc you're trying to win territories and you'll set it up um, so there isn't uh, a color matching on the territories here and each of these stockpiles next to the corresponding territories that is uh, what's going to trigger that 
territory and i'll get into that to a second so we have it set up here then you will have three cards left over and you will decide among the two players that you're playing again this is only a two-player game who will go first the first player will draw the uh, one card and then the second player will have the two cards left over and this is going to be your corresponding hand so Again, the aim of the game is to score as many points, trying to win uh, territories, and you might get some points via your hand too, but I'll get into that when the scoring comes up in the video. So on your turn, you quite simply deplore an orc, and then you draw a card. So uh, you only get to play one card, and when you are playing an orc on a territory, it has to be a different color of the one that you're playing. So this purple can go here, 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 but it cannot repeat on this side. And once this gets played uh, here, no longer can this player play a green or a red. They would have to play a different color, so keep that in mind. You notice there are two different colors on each card there is also um, always one orc and two orcs now this is important because it's going to be adding to your numbers when the battle triggers in a uh, specific territory gaining you points now um, when you uh, play a, a card if you choose to play one orc you on your draw step will get to draw two cards adding to your hand so then I can take from any stockpile I want I can take one from here I can take one from here or both from there if I want but if I were to choose to play the two orcs right here now these orcs in here don't count for any uh, math at all when it comes to the battle I only get to draw one card and I again can draw it from anywhere I want so that is important to remember when you're playing your one deploy or card when you uh, comes to the numbers and drawing your opponent will continue to do that and again he has to play a different color right here and he'll play that one there he'll draw one card and uh, when you actually uh, deplete one of the stockpiles uh, according to whatever territory that you're going after that will trigger the battle so let's say that we finally drew all these cards from this pop pile gameplay stops for a second you see who wins and in case of a tie um, it is the person that uh, is has the um, territory closest to the box so that's why it's important to have the box there so if uh, the player on this side has won the territory here he would basically win all ties and so, again it's always one closest here but um, if there is no territories won, this will stay stagnant until one before it wins, and then you can win multiple territories that way. So we don't like that. So let's just say this guy has four instead of the two purples. He wins, and then you take all the cards except for one and discard them. The one that you keep, you will flip over and point the arrow to your side saying that you scored one point. Now that's important because you, you, the orcs don't score points when it comes to territories like this. They will again be discarded. You are just awarded one point and you have now won the white territory. Remember that because it's gonna be important in a second. You'll continue to do this process uh, playing orcs, drawing cards until each player has one every territory and then you will go to the other scoring mechanism in the game and find out who is the ultimate orc winner i'll show you how that works in a second so you have all the territories owned um, and then you will uh, count the territory points on each side but it's actually going to come down to the hand now you will this is where the number of orcs matter um, you will score any orcs for uh that you have in your hand of a point for each one uh, via the tribes that you've won so if I have any red cards because I've won the red tribe I'm gonna count them as points which I have a lot and you're gonna count both sides so I would get one two for that uh, guy want three for that uh, well I have three in all and five for just red because I won the red territory then we go to white I'm gonna be counting this side so I get another point there I got one for white I got three for white and nothing for this one but I've also won yellow so yellow gets me three points right there so I have just gained 11 points from having a, a lot of cards in my hand that correspond to my tribes that I've won so that's how you can get a lot of points but it's not gonna be that simple really so that's how you've played orc now let's get on to the next game rum okay so this is a setup for rum um, you have the community beach cards and all the captain cards up here and basically this is a timer card uh, you will uh, also take one card and give it to each player we'll just play a two-player game but this actually plays up to four so once you have drawn cards from the shipwreck here you will add the dreaded 
repair it. Now you're gonna be doing this a lot. You're gonna be taking this shipwreck and shuffling it up. Every time that you play a card and or uh, have to discard any, you will actually be shuffling uh, all the discarded cards into the shipwreck. So um, be wary of that. And once you have that done, you are ready to play. Now the aim of the game is to try to get the amount of points uh, according to players. In a two player game, it's 21 points. Once that happens, the end of the game triggers and that person is a winner. The other way that the game can end is if this timer gets all the way to seven and you draw the parrot card, then uh, you will add up everyone's score. The person with the highest scores wins. So Rum is a very fast paced game. All you're gonna be doing is drawing a card and playing a set. There are two different places you can draw a card from. You can draw from the shipwreck and just do it randomly, but beware of the dreaded parrot, which I'll get into what he does in a second. Or you can draw from the beach here and just take a card from here and then take one of the cards from the shipwreck and replace it face down. Now, um, let me go over the beach here. This is a community pot. You ignore the double bottles, but anything that's up top with the single bottle bottles here you can play onto your set so that's the aim of the game is to try to get as many um, cards here as you can the captain cards to win either you know with points or have the most points when the trigger is uh, hit so um, I have this card in my hand and you can uh, play the double uh, bottles here but you can only play one color but in this case I have two purple bottles here and I can attribute that to my set so once i've drawn a card let's say i just draw this card from the uh shipwreck here i have two cards and there's not there is a purple here so i'm going to put four purples as the set that i'm going to be playing and i will grab the corresponding card now i always move the card uh with the number facing towards me of the set that i've played so if i would have played a three purple set i would have it in front of me like this but i played a four so i'll flip it like that so the card is multi-use for scoring there's also a backside so you can get all the way up to eight plus and once i've done that i will take whatever i played put it in the shipwreck and shuffle it up again so then it will be the next person's turn and they'll draw and let's just say that they draw uh, the last beach card because every time you draw a beach card it gets placed face down and this might be a strategy you want to play to take out other bottles so other players can't play them but it's also going to hinder you because now you can only play the one purple bottle as the community but let's say this player here decides to draw this last card and put it in his hand for his draw phase you will then take the last card and uh, this happens they call it a tidal wave you flip over these cards here and then this is the new beach and again you have to have these single bottles up top now let me go over the dreaded parrot card because if you were to draw it from a shipwreck you're gonna have to discard cards now any cards that you uh, want to draw uh, with discard I mean you can discard but the parrot um, as you can see will make you discard the amount that's on the timer so you would have to discard two plank cards and on the back side if it gets flipped over to the higher stakes you're going to have to discard three plank cards now the bad thing about the parrot also if he so happens to be on the beach when the tidal wave uh, comes and flips the cards up he will then go back into the shipwreck of course but you everyone instead of the person that just draws the pair because if the person draws it from the shipwreck they are the only one that has to discard but if it happens on the beach here everyone at the table has to discard the amount that's shown here plus one so in a two-player game we would have to discard six cards in all at this point if the pair were to show up on the beach and then you would tick it down just like you would the timer and it will be on two and this is kind of again a built-in timer you would shuffle that uh, the parrot back in if it was on the beach you would replace it with the next one and keep going now the one thing that i want to add is there's something that's called a trio set now if you're able to get one color of single bottles and play them even if it's the, in the community or the one from your hand you're able to claim that color immediately now i didn't mention when you have a captain card uh, the person in order to steal it because people can steal it they would have to play one more than the number that you have here so in order to take this purple one from you a person would have to play a set of five purple bottles but if they were able to play um three 
uh, purple single bottles they could steal it no matter what and bump it up too because again when you play a set of let's say uh, six you would bump it up to six to steal it but it would go up to six either way because it was on four if you did it with the uh, tr uh, rum trio set other thing I want to mention, you cannot ever bump up your own captain card. So if I were to get more purple bottles and I had this set to make it seven instead of six, I can't do that. You can only acquire the captain cards by stealing them or taking them from the middle here. Now in this case, I would uh, have a trio set of pink and I would take it and bump it up too. But if this ever happens on the beach like this, you will just take all these cards, shuffle them back into the shipwreck and get a whole nother beach that doesn't count towards anybody's play. Now you'll continue to do this process, drawing cards from the beach, drawing cards from the shipwreck, trying to ignore the parrot until one of two things happens. You reach the score limit for the amount of players, or um, if you draw the parrot when it's on seven, then the game immediately ends, and then you count up your points and see who the winner is. And you're going to see the captain cards move a lot in this game, and that is how you play rum. Now let's get on to the third game, so... All right, so this is the game set up for a two to four player game for so. Uh, you don't need the box there, but I like it for decoration. Um, now, this again is a game about pick up and distribute, and you wanna do that in a strategic way. So to start the game, you wanna pick up your wheelbarrow here and find out what flowers you're going after. Now, you're gonna try to score as many points uh, sowing these flowers and seeds uh, via this color flower and or the uh, middle of the flower. Now we'll go over scoring a little later because that's the more complicated part. So now that we know that we're the blue player, we want to try to get as many blue flowers in our wheelbarrow via the score pile as we can. Now what we do on our turn is very simple. Um, all you do is pick up any one of these piles that you want and redistribute it the way that the windmill right here says. So in this case it's going to be going around here until all Cards are gone now um, you can pick in front of you or in, in any other uh, different wheelbarrow um, for a two-player game these will just be dummy players and you'll sit a play uh, across from your uh, other opponent and in three-player game this will be a dummy player and that's gonna matter in the uh, flower portion and I'll get into that in a second so what you do again is just pick up any uh, pile you want and you want to keep it uh, like this. So you, the bottom card is going to be on top. You don't want to expose the flower because it's very important. And then you just distribute them to the next pile until it's done. Now, if uh, the last card is a seed, like you see here, it will flower. It doesn't matter where it is. It's going to flower. And uh, you'll flip it over like that. And now we know that this is a blue flower with a yellow inside. Um, now, uh, the next player will continue to do this, picking up a pile and redistribute it. Uh, the one thing I want to mention, if you do uh, flower a seed that has multiple colors of that flower, they will bloom as well. So you will flower this one and the one uh, that you just got done doing. But again, it has to be the last card uh, for a seed to flower. So that's how the seed sowing works. And you'll continue to do this process until you no longer can pick up a row of at least two because you can never pick up a row that is one. And if the, all the rows are one, then the game will end. And then you'll accumulate your points and find out who the winner is. How do you accumulate points? Well, you have to get flowers in your wheelbarrow. So let's say that I pick up this, uh, this pile right here and I place it right there. Well, let's say we're placing it right there, and then we're placing it right there. I know we skipped one. And then the last flower, uh, well, the last card that was placed was a fully bloomed flower, and it was in a, an actual player's wheelbarrow. Now, this is where the dummy player comes in. If you do it on a dummy player, this doesn't happen. But since this is my opponent, and the last card there was a flower, they will claim this flower and put it in their score pile. Now they also will claim any other flowers that are in that pile because you can have multiple flowers in a pile of a wheelbarrow that haven't bloomed or well, haven't actually been sown and planted and taken as scores. Um, and once you play this last one here, you will take any flowers that has the color that are uh, matching 
the one that you played. So this one has a red and blue color. I will take all red flowers that have an outer uh, color of red or inner color of red, and I would take all blue flowers that have the same uh, stipulations. So in this case, I would take that one, that one, and this one. So I scored a bunch, well, my opponent scored a bunch of points right there. So that's how you get flowers, and you just put them in your score pile, and that's how cards start to deplete. The last two cards I want to go over are the special cards. Now, if these cards are placed last, they're going to do something. Um, the wheelbarrow will just simply, if it's placed last, it will flip over, and the direction of the rotation that you're placing is reversed. Very simple. The gopher here has two different things. If you place this last and there are actually flowers in the row, he's going. you get to choose which one he eats color-wise. So if you said blue, both of these will be gone. But if you said yellow or red, just one of them would be gone and then he would be flipped over the uh the opposite side allows you to actually grow stuff so if there are any seeds and you place it this will bloom flowers of that color and you, again you get to choose which seed if there are multiples so those are the two special cards you'll continue to do this process you know picking up these piles redistribute them trying to get the flowers to fall perfectly into your wheelbarrow so you can get multiple points now let me go over the scoring so you can see how that works so scoring is going to go as such you're going to gain points uh, according to your color and sometimes not to your color so any center uh, color that is your color you're going to get three points for so i'm going to get three six nine for getting these flowers that has a blue center just on that scoring so and then you score uh the two point version which is any outer portion that's blue so i only get uh two points via this one because that's the only actual blue flower i have so i'm up to 11 right now and then you'll score any other points for flowers that don't match any other stipulations these all were scored so this one doesn't match my color in the center or the out um so i'm gonna get one point so this score pile is worth 12 points your opponent will do the same and then you'll find out who the winner is and that's simply how you play so now let's go on to the last game which is gym so this is the game of gym setup now it's designed to be played with two players or two pairs of teams 2v2 or 3v3 however you want to play it but you're only going to make in one decision you got to collaborate if you're a team on what you're going to do on your turn now there are two different phases the picking phase which we have set up here and the second one is the activity phase uh, associated with these six activities that we have here so we have 12 kids lined up here and ultimately you're going to have 12 kids at the end of the picking phase in your hand uh, there are two different um, rounds of picking these 12 kids and you flip these and then you'll have more to pick from after that and then you'll go on to the second phase so what you're trying to do is accumulate points via activities and there are only going to be four of these activities moving on now the way that you do that i'll show you um now you can see there are two, two different types of kids good kids here that have two different activities that they're good at um, one's better than the other some might be balanced and some might be a little better and kind of weaker on the second one like this guy here uh, but the second type of kid is a bully now he and or she they're not going to be too good at things but they manipulate the game during both phases in different ways the way that they manipulate this uh, on the picking phase is they're going to um, pretty much decide which activities of the four um, are going to be going on you can pick any one of these activities that's why these lines are here kind of keep them lined up um, and move it up ahead now this is basically voting for majority when you pick up a bully and put it in your hand no other one not the regular kids don't do that so um, on your picking phase all you're gonna do is pick one kid put it to your hand and you'll go back and forth applying the bully rule when necessary and you'll continue to do that and once these are all picked you'll flip over these 12 kids and once the last kid is picked you'll see which one of of the uh, six of four of the events that are going to be moving on and that depends on which one's furthest ties are basically decided by adjacent role which i'll let you get into when you actually get the game so we have four that are going to be decided these four activities are going to be going on to the fourth phase and the last two are going to be flipped over and these are going to be a coach so they have special things that apply to them and i'll get into what they do in a second so strategy is trying to get your um activity onto the second phase and pick well while doing so so now let's go on to the second phase 
So here's where the meat and potatoes are in the game. Now, you're going to be doing uh, one action on your turn. You're just going to be playing one of your kids on the event that you want. Now, each one of these events has something different that it actually does, and you may choose to do it when you play a card. Now, this one, the football says force a kid. This allows you to pick a card randomly from your opponent's hand and place it in front of him, he has to play this kid no matter what on his turn. So you can choose to do that in addition to actually playing one of your kids on this um, event. Now, the thing that you can do is you can also trigger the colors of the kid that you actually played if the activity is on the four activity uh, format here. Now, he uh, could also do the rope one, which is swap two kids, and this basically means you get to swap any two kids that you want on the board but they have to go back to the original spot which the kid left so that is something that this kid could do because he has the yellow but if the blue was in here he would have three different things he could do special wise so remember on your turn you you're placing a kid and also executing a special depending on what color it is if you want now you'll continue to do this placing kids down until um, you have all the kids placed uh, which will be three 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 on each side which which six kids will actually be playing in each, each event now uh, There is something special with the coaches that you can play like I said the bullies actually do something in both phases Now you're going to be placing them and doing everything that you want to do the uh, special event and placing them anywhere You want but you get to take one of these coaches and put them uh, Facing the event that you want now these kids cannot be manipulated now You can put them on your opponent's side too And that might be a strategy that you're trying to do or you're trying to keep your kids safe because people are going to be Manipulating the good kids and taking them and put them on your side so that's where the coaches can come into play, but they don't come into play until both bullies have been uh, activated and then they'll be stolen from each player or wherever they're at as other bullies have been are being played. So you'll continue to do this process again, playing all your kids, and once that happens, you will do the scoring phase, which is one of the things I like. Let me go over it. So the cool thing about scoring is you're going to be adding up the scores uh, according to the color, only the color when it comes to the specific activity. And whatever the difference is, that uh, player gets uh, that many points. So in this case, there are no greens right here, and they have five together, and they're going to get five points outright. Uh, and the yellow one here, there are no scores, uh, and they're, uh, he's just going to get two points. And this one here, there isn't any competitive competitive nature but we're going to switch it up this one right here let's say he has uh three points and she has one point he's going to get the difference and have two points and this one right here is not that competitive he's going to get five points because you'll take away the one and the person with the most points after doing all that wins the game so those are all four of the micro paco games games and how they play so now let's get to a brief outro and i'll tell you how to find this on kickstarter so you can get your hands on a few copies of these so that is how all four of these bite-sized games are played and i think they do have variations and they are different than the other pack of games kickstarter that perplex games ran uh prior so there's more variation in your portable game set and i think that is always a good thing now as I said, if you want to support this Kickstarter and get your hands on your very own copy of these, it's going to be starting on March 3rd of 2016. So if it is past that date or it's close to it, I'm going to have a Kickstarter right here in the bottom of the description that's going to shoot you right over so you can go and support them. And thank you so much for watching my very first preview. And if you so happen to be watching this on the Kickstarter page, if it's good enough to make it, go ahead and support them. You know you want to. It's right there. Click the button get these games and as always the, these games are subject to change now they might add more as stretch goals and it, you might get more than four games just keep that in mind and that is it everyone thank you so much for watching today's video please like and subscribe at the end here and i've been dave and until the next time that i see you have a great rest of your day and a great time with all that you play you heard it here on the game Vine. bye I'm